Hi, I'm Paul, the Happy Gilder. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to go over my first year as a, as a YouTube artist and I'll kind of share some of the highs, the lows, look at some of the stats from my channel and kind of just a bit of an overview really. And more than anything, just a massive thank you to everyone who's followed me, who's left nice comments, who supported me on Patreon. All of you have made the channel what it is and I'm, I'm really proud of it and I'm, I'm so thankful to you guys. So thank you very much, firstly. But before I crack on with that, if this is the first time you're viewing the channel and you're a fan of gold leaf, sign painting, reverse glass, glue chipping, digital processes and loads more, then you're in the right place because that's all this channel's about and I try to release a video every week. Also, if you would like to support the channel, I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description. I reward my patrons with a different vector design every month. There's also a link to my Etsy shop where I'm selling some of my designs and my Flickr account, so you can see some of my old work. And last but not least, the Happy Gilder Facebook group, where we're nearly at 500 people now. Everyone's kind of sharing ideas, helping each other out, sharing their works, really positive place. So you should check it out. Anyway, this is a video for me to kind of go over my first year on YouTube. So I'll start with the kind of, with what sort of spurred me to set the channel up. So for a bit of background, I've been doing reverse glass work since 2014. I got into it because my father-in-law bought a sandblaster to recondition some alloys and I ended up sort of etching some glass with it and got really into it. Following that, I'd sort of hit a wall with it. I'd gone as far as I could go. So my wife bought me a, a day-long course with Dave Smith, who, if you don't know, is the best reverse glass artist in the world and luckily lives in the same country as me. So I went down there for a day. Dave taught me how to apply gold leaf and how to do acid etching and reverse painting. And I came away from that kind of just thinking that I want to learn everything, man. And I'm sort of set about learning as much as I could. The problem there is people aren't really willing to give this info up for free. And there's very little in the way of tutorials and, and detailed sort of descriptions of how to do this online. So my journey has been long, fraught with kind of trial and error and a lot of error until I got to a point where I'm kind of, you know, confident with a lot of the techniques. And because of that, and because of things like lockdown and stuff like that, I thought, I want to share this kind of craft with people because I don't, I don't really do commissions. You know, I'll do a couple a year, but I, I always want to keep this as a hobby. I don't want to do it as a job. And I thought that having all of this knowledge is just a waste. You know, to, I could share that with people who could make a career out of it or who could kind of do similar to me and have a really kind of rewarding hobby. So at the end of last year, I decided right, I'm going to set up a YouTube channel and share some of this information. So I made my first video and released it on the 9th of January, and that was kind of my technique of how to make a custom mirror. Now, I'm not saying I invented this technique, but I certainly didn't get shown it by anyone. You know, it was a lucky combination of having access to a vinyl cutter and a sandblaster. And then when I'd sandblasted the back coating off the mirror, I thought, this is really cool, man. Got, got sort of paint in it and stuff like that. and you know, I'd, I'd sort of figured that out for myself and I just wanted to kind of share that because I didn't think that was a technique that, that whether or not people were already doing it, that wasn't the sort of traditional way of making a mirror. So I made the video and it took me all weekend and it was really hard. And after finishing it, I thought, I'm not going to run a YouTube channel. It's just a pain. That was It was so difficult to make the video. If you've seen it, you'll realise that the sound quality is terrible. You know, it was real rookie mistakes in there. I think the majority of my comments on my early videos were sort your sound quality out, you know, and I did take that on board, hence this little thing here. But what happened was I got a few views, but I actually got a request, you know, because I put out in that video that if you have requests, let me know and I'll, you know, try and honor them in, in a future video. And someone contacted me and said, I'd like to know what your technique is for glue chipping. So I thought, well, I'll do a second video then. So I did the second video on, on glue chipping and it was a little bit easier, still crap sound, but it was a lot easier to make, a lot quicker. And when I got to the end of it, I realized I've got a half finished piece and the logical thing to do would, would be to gild this piece and do a video on gilding. And I sort of thought three bids, how to make a mirror, how to glue chip glass, and then how to apply gold leaf, and that'll be it. And that was it until the, the, the glue chipping video 
started getting a lot of views. And when I say a lot, I mean, it was a lot in comparison to, to the first video. You now I've got like a couple of thousand views over, over a few days. And I, honestly, I thought that was me gone viral. And I thought, you know, maybe, you know, if, if other videos become that popular, I might be able to make, make a few quid off it or something. So, and I've nearly hit my goal of, of doing a video a week for the year. I don't think I'll quite hit 52, but um, it'll be close. So anyway, I'm now going to just jump across into YouTube and then we'll look at some of the stats from the year and see how I've done. So these are the stats from the last 365 days. 138,000 views, which is insane. You know, this is so niche, or in my mind, it's so niche This as, as a kind of hobby or craft. I just thought it would get picked up by a few people and that would be that. So nearly 140,000 views is, is humbling. Um, 12,000 watch hours. Uh, the reason that's kind of relevant is because you have to have 4,000 watch hours before um, you can get monetized on YouTube. You have to get 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. Um, so for the first sort of half of the year, uh, before I'd hit that, I, you know, you don't earn any money from your videos. It's only sort of after you've got that. Um, and an absolutely insane 3,248 subscribers, which are just, again, same as the viewing figures. I'm just absolutely astonished by that. I can't believe that many people are following my channel and, and I can't thank you enough. It's, it's absolutely amazing. So jumping into a couple of video stats, my top viewed video is my video on how to make a glue chip glass sign, which was my second vid with nearly 27,000 views. And I th think if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have anywhere near as many subscribers. I might not have hit my, um, you know, my um, view hours total by now, because this one is, seems to be the one that directs people to the channel. So it's not great in terms of it's got the bad sound quality and stuff like that. But, but I'm, I've left it there. I haven't tried to edit the sound and, and yeah, it's, it's done really well and guided a lot of traffic to the site. In terms of earnings from videos, I think my top earning video is my, my big feature length, how to make a glue chip glass sign. And so far that's earned me nearly 48 pound. Now 48 pound isn't to be laughed at at all. You know, that's a nice amount of money. And it's also something that will generate passive income. Meaning it's there now, if people keep watching it, you know, that, that number will go up. But what is a little bit disheartening, I suppose, is, you know, that video that piece took two weeks to make and it cost an absolute bomb in gold leaf and white gold leaf and stuff like that so that's nowhere near paying me back yet but um hopefully it will one day so moving on so youtube isn't my only source of income for this i, I set up a patreon in june and that's solely to fund these videos because you know gold leaf is expensive you know, the glass is expensive and, you know, it, it was costing me a lot of money to run this channel. So, so when I put my message at the beginning that says this video is funded by my patrons, that is quite literally true. Everything that I've taken out of Patreon, I've, I've put back into the channel. I've bought materials for videos and equipment for my camera, all things like that. So, so in total between YouTube and Patreon, I'm one pound short of 700 pounds. Um, in earnings, which is amazing. You know, that's a really decent amount of money. But in terms of my outgoings, I haven't actually put all this together yet. I've put all the receipts in one place, but I know for a fact it's a lot more than £700. So, so far, the channel's cost me a considerable amount more than I've actually earned from it. And I suppose that's to be expected. You know, it's a craft that uses precious metals and expensive materials, so it was never going to be a cheap thing to run. Money aside, what this has also cost me is every single weekend of the year. You know, bar a couple where I've been camping, I've got a full-time job. So I make these videos, I've filmed them in the evenings or I'll film them at weekends and then edit them at weekends. And I've done that pretty much every weekend this year. So it's been, you know, taken a lot of dedication and that isn't a moan at all. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, really rewarding. I absolutely love releasing the videos. I love it, love it when people comment and, and I certainly love it when people share work with me that they've done from watching the videos. That is by far the most rewarding thing about this. So halfway through the year, I sort of came to the realization that YouTube, albeit being an amazing platform for sharing 
my kind of videos, isn't the best platform to get a kind of community forum together. Now, I had a lot of questions being directed at me, which I was always happy to answer, but it just seemed like it would have been better if a lot of these questions could have been put to a group. So I got myself a Facebook, set up a Facebook group, and it's now at around about 480 members, I think. And it's fantastic. There's so many people on there from kind of absolute beginner to proper professionals dishing out amazing advice. And the, the, the most rewarding thing is that there's people on there sharing work where they'd never sort of tried any of these techniques before. So that's, you know, the single most rewarding thing is seeing what people have done from kind of stumbling across my channel, you know, so I can share a couple of those with you now. So, so this first beautiful piece here is by a guy called Omar and Omar was actually the first person to ever comment on any of my YouTube videos and he sent me a really nice in-depth thank you message and telling me that kind of he'd done the Dave Smith course years ago but then hadn't done anything since and that my channel had kind of you know reinvigorated his passion for this art form and you can see he's obviously a very talented artist. What transpired after that is we ended up sharing contact details. I'm in regular contact with him over WhatsApp and we've become quite good friends and we even hooked up on Zoom and had a couple of beers together a few months ago so that would have never happened if it wasn't for this channel and I'm really grateful for it. This one here is a guy called Mick and and got a company called Kerry Sandblasted Art Co. And Mick was kind of experimenting with like sandblasting glass and mirrors prior to finding the channel, but then sort of stumbled across it and, you know, tried his hand at glue chipping. And, you know, for a first piece at glue chipping, this is absolutely amazing. You know, really nice design, really nice chip. All the colours are lovely. So, you know, and when I see something like this, it really does kind of make me happy. It lifts your spirits, lets you know that it's definitely worth kind of continuing with. Another piece here, this is a guy called Chad who is sharing his first ever reverse glass piece. And I'm just looking at this, that's absolutely amazing. You know, everything about this, like the chip is lovely. The gilding is really nice. The paint blending is really, you know, the paint blending is stunning. And the design is just so cool, man. You know, I get stuck in this kind of thing of I really like the kind of fancy Victorian stuff. So I never really deviate from the, the, that sort of traditional style. So when I see something with more of this kind of tiki vibe to it, I just think it goes to show this, these techniques lend themselves to so much more than just that kind of traditional looking ornamental glass. But yeah, they're just a couple of pieces shared by some of the Facebook group members. If you check out the group, there's so much more on there and it's just such a, yeah, such a really positive place to be. There's no, you know, attitude on there. Everyone's really friendly and respectful and, and helpful. So I don't know, I don't think I expected it to be anything else, but having not had a Facebook, I kind of, you know, got this kind of vibe that it might not be a, a good thing to get, but it's, it's amazing. So that bring, brings me on to kind of what's next. And at the moment, I'm, I'm not quite sure. And by that, I don't mean I'm quitting by any means, but I certainly am going to sort of rein it back a little bit next year. I, I can't keep up making a video a week. With that in mind, if I am going to have, you know, an extended period of time off, I'll pause my Patreon so no one who is sort of supporting my channel will get charged. But there are a lot more techniques to cover. You know, a few off the top of my head, I plan on doing a video on mirror silvering, uh, tonal etching, um, the sort of anatomy of scroll work and kind of how to draw them and build them up. Yeah, that's just a few ideas for videos I've got planned that I'll be releasing in the new year. But like I say, probably not on a weekly basis. So anyway, that I think covers everything other than to, again, just say thank you so much. It's been a humbling experience. It's been an amazing year. I've got a body of work out there, which I couldn't have even dreamed of at the beginning of the year. You know, even in my sort of biggest plans of getting all of this content out there, when I look at it all as a collective, I'm really proud of it, you know, and I'm really happy that it's helped a lot of people out and set some people on a new path. So thank you and have a lovely winter break and I'll be back in January. So till next time, cheers.